Hey guys, welcome to WOW. And WOW, if you are in Oklahoma, what a beautiful day. Not a cloud in the sky, absolutely gorgeous. I certainly appreciate you guys tuning in and chiming in on these videos and uh, sharing them around. I I would appreciate it if you would share the video with at least two, three, five people and uh, just to get the word out there. You never know who needs help that is ashamed, afraid, or just ignorant to ask for it. And maybe something that's said in these videos uh, would help them. But thank you again for everything. I am on the road. I pulled over where I found good signal. I am back with my friends Tommy and Nikki Aslan. They're in Wewoka, Oklahoma, down by Shawnee, Seminole. If you're in the Holdenville area, Oklahoma City area, uh, in that area, if you're there, if you can be there, 1045 this morning, uh, we're going to have a good time, very good time. And I want to say thank you for that, all that you do to make the ministry successful and allow me to travel the way that I do and am called to do. God is my source, but he uses people. And I appreciate uh, every time you sow into the ministry, you're saying we believe in what you do. And I certainly appreciate that. I will not hold you long this morning because I still got a ways to drive but I wanted to, I really, isn't it nice when the minister enjoys what he spoke on? Last week I really enjoyed uh, bringing out how uh, we can even win battles that we invite on ourselves. And I went back to that story <clears throat> of David and Goliath. And I see all you guys chiming in, and, and so thank you again very much. But back to the story of David and Goliath, and, and I won't recount the whole story, but as Goliath was taunting Israel and even taunting David, David didn't say a word to Goliath at that moment. He just bent down and started picking up stones out of the brook, smooth stones. Now, that leads me to this. David gave Goliath's taunts the silent treatment. And that's what I want to talk to you about today because I began to study the the science of and the psychology of the silent treatment. And if you've ever been given the silent treatment by somebody or you've given them the silent treatment, size does not matter there. There was little David and big Goliath, but the silent treatment began to whittle down the giant. And they say in psychology that even two minutes of silence in your mind, just getting quiet in your mind, it will relieve tension in your body. How many times have we said, oh, I'm just so tense, I'm just so tense? It's because we don't have enough silence in our lives. And it's actually, they say, uh, just being silent is more relaxing than even listening to music. And it changes your blood pressure, and it changes the blood circulation in your brain. Because, see, the brain is wired this way. When it's too quiet, the brain begins to fill that silence with noises. We call them voices. And tinnitus is what it's called in the medical field, but tinnitus is basically, and maybe some of you have experienced this, thank God I have not, but a ringing in the ears. That is tinnitus. And so there is a spiritual, Paul said first in the natural, then the spiritual. If there's a physical tinnitus, there is a spiritual tinnitus, and a spiritual tinnitus is the constant chiming of that problem or some failure or some fear or someone that just drives you bat crazy. There's just always that chiming.
chiming. And so when you try to just get quiet, that spiritual tinnitus starts kicking in. Now, watch this. This, what would I call it, inherent silence is from the lack of a response. And so this is the reason a lot of people like to argue is because, you know, the mind, I heard someone say this the other day in listening to a motivational speaker, uh, that your mind is a bad neighborhood you don't want to go into alone. So you need somebody to be with you. This is the reason during a problem so many people like to have conversation because they're afraid to be quiet by themselves. That's a bad neighborhood because of the chiming, the spiritual tinnitus, the driving you nuts. And this lack of response, it begins to create a void. And even oftentimes, we just become anxious, excited, even eager that our minds just want to fill that void with something. So we begin to interpret the voices we hear. Well, I wonder what they think about this. I wonder what they think about that. I wonder what their opinion is about this. And it'll drive you nuts. Understand this. It's in the interpretation of what those voices are telling us. It's in our interpretation of those voices that we create more problems and even stress on ourselves. Do you realize this? I had never seen this, ever. In Genesis, the first chapter, the word says that God says, let there be light. And of course, there was light. That word light comes from the Hebrew word ore. Ore means let there be happiness. Do you realize that? God created you to be happy, not for you to tolerate, not for you to procrastinate happiness, but for you to be happy. And sometimes you have to give the silent treatment to be happy. Now, I'm talking more in the spiritual realm, but there are, and understand this, and I've said it multiplicities of times, people are not your enemy. It's their personality. It's, it's, their, it's their filter of perception that becomes your enemy, not the person. It's how the enemy is using them to get to you because the enemy doesn't want you to be silent. Do you realize this? Man, it was never recorded that man spoke a word until Eve spoke. And that's when the enemy came to her and said, can you eat of the fruit? The first words recorded that man ever spoke was he was answering a question in his mind. And that's what circumstances will do. They create questions in your mind. And that's what Goliath was doing to David. He was creating torments and questions and fears in his mind. But David ignored Goliath while he picked up the stones. And so, here's the thing, and this may blow your mind, because you know I believe in speaking to the mountain, but do you realize we've been taught to speak the word to the enemy? But if you look back in Genesis, look where that got man. If man had never spoke to the enemy, the fall would have never occurred. Who are you allowing to break your silence? The enemy will use people, will use family, will use friends, will use situations, will use circumstances. Man was created to be happy. 
the earth was created to be happy. And its happiness was in its silence, which was giving the circumstances the silent treatment. When's the last time you gave your circumstance the silent treatment? David gave Goliath the silent treatment, and it drove Goliath nuts. It drove Goliath so nuts, he began to talk about David. You little, you send this little dog out to me carrying a stick and a sling? And in, anytime someone feels like they're getting the silent treatment, they begin to get angry. And when a person begins to get angry, it's out of jealousy because that devalues their importance. And I'm, I'm not suggesting you give everybody the silent treatment. I'm just saying, who are you allowing in your life to break your silence and steal your happiness? What problem are you talking about so... Well, I just have to talk about it. Why are you talking about it? It's broken your silence. And that's what I wanted to bring to you today, that the enemy broke her silence, which he broke her rest in the finished work and word of God. Well, yeah, Mark, she spoke the word because when the enemy said, you, you, you can't eat of the fruit, Oh, no, we may eat of the fruit of the trees. Realize this. It is the enemy trying to break your silence when the question could start an argument. And if you can identify that, just remain silent. Just remain silent. So it is actually stronger in faith to remain silent in a struggle than to quote half the scriptures to the enemy. I'll say it again. It is stronger faith to remain silent in a struggle than to quote scriptures to the enemy. God did not give the word of him to man to use on the enemy. He gave that word to man so he could dwell on those thoughts while the enemy is trying to break his silence. The word of God produces thoughts, not just words you use against the enemy. The enemy is defeated. The apostle John said he was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. There you go. So who are you allowing to break your silence? And you may be thinking, Mark, you don't know what I'm going through. Look at David and Goliath. But David gave Goliath the silent treatment and just kept on picking up stones. And so the enemy will always try to break. And this is very simple and always like the deep stuff. But sometimes we just have to go back to the first works of the elementary understanding of who we are in Christ. And that we do have power and authority. Our power and authority is to remain silent. Psalm the 46th chapter, the 10th verse says, Be still and know that I am God. In Proverbs uh, the 17th chapter, the word says, Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he's deemed intelligent. So how smart are you? I'm not asking how many quip scriptures you can quote to your problem. I'm asking, can you think about those scriptures and remain silent? I want to tell you, I mean, the, the religious world has become just fascinated by spiritual warfare. Here's your spiritual warfare. Remain silent. Remain silent. That's a warfare. You're wanting to say something back. No, I'm going to get, and I speak on you today that you begin, and this will blow your mind, people, and I want you to email me and tell me, hey, 
man, this happened. I'll tell you, it works. You know, it works. Remain silent because the enemy's always trying to break your silence. Up to the fall in the garden, man was silent. Let there be happiness. Happiness is in the silence. So give your problems the silent treatment. Now, watch this. Psychologically speaking, the silent treatment in the natural realm prevents, they say, people from solving their conflicts. Okay, I can understand that. But I'm not going to get in an argument with the plumber when my car doesn't start. Why are you telling people your problems who have no authority to fix them? Why are you sharing your life with people to create voices? Can you not handle silence? Is that why you need so many people talking to you? When you can't handle silence, you have become insecure through something in your life. And that need to have voices, there's, do you, I, I know people like this, and I'm sure you do, they've always got to have something going on. There you go. It's like some people can't be happy being happy. They've got to have something going on because they can't handle the silence. They, they, they've got to have some type of battle to be fighting, to feel validated. And so I, I'm just quickly encouraging you, learn to enjoy the quiet. Well, Mark... I'm going through a struggle. I'm going through a struggle. Okay, we all go through things. But God has given you enough words that you can dwell on those instead of having to confront the enemy constantly. There are some wars that you will never win. Do you hear me? There are some battles you will never win because some battles would never have a victor. It is only to wear you out. Do not engage in a battle that is beyond your silence. And so in the psychological realm, it's understood that Yeah, using the silent treatment, it's hard to resolve a problem. It is absolutely hard to resolve a problem. But then again, some problems will never be resolved, ever. Okay? Well, Mark, the Word says he gives us victory in all things. Yeah, where's your victory? In your silence. Do you realize Adam and Eve lived in victory until they opened their mouth? Until they opened their mouth. So using the silent treatment, it does have an impact in psychology. Psychiatrists say that the silent treatment on another person has an impact on the health of that relationship. Well, okay. But is it a healthy relationship anyway? Because, again, some conflicts are there just to wear you down. You cannot hang around people who always have to be right. Insecure people always have to be right. So I'm I'm going to start saying... And and I love that story even more of David and Goliath. David literally, psychologically abused Goliath. The little guy came through. 
He's just ignoring it. God, that drives you nuts when people ignore you. I've got a buddy, my golf buddy. He's so funny. If he texts and and you don't respond in a little bit, he'll text you back. I will not be ignored. Now, he's just joking, of course. But that's what the enemy does. It's like, I will not be ignored. I'll keep on pestering you. You'll dread seeing me. Just give them the silent treatment. I will not respond to you. Or as Doc Holliday on Tombstone would say, I will not be parte. So you and I need to start. And, and I made up my mind the other day. As I began to see this, I made up my mind. I'm going to start abusing my enemy. And again, my enemy is not a person. It's a mentality people choose to operate in. So, well, Mark, how do I know I'm abusing the enemy? Because my intent is to wear them down. My intent is to wear them down. You're not going to get to me with it anymore. Now, a person may be using silence in an abusive way if they intend to hurt another person. And if the silence lasts for an extended period, and how do I say this? Even in research, the feeling of being ignored can affect people's sensory perceptions, such as feeling like they're in a lack of control. They begin to doubt themselves. They begin to feel they're not worthy of attention. So do you see what the silent treatment does to the enemy? It makes him doubt if it's even affecting you. It creates feelings of not being in control. When are you going to stop letting the enemy push your buttons? When are you going to make the feel? The enemy's told us all our lives, you're not worthy, you're not worthy. But when you give the enemy the silent treatment, it shifts that feeling of unworthiness back on the enemy. I say it's time we turn the table. And so being on the receiving end of a silent treatment, it causes that feeling of worthlessness. When have you made your enemy feel worthless? And again, your enemy is not the person. It's the devil, if you will, fallen thoughts that man chooses to operate in to come against you to create value in them. The only reason someone would want to tear you down is because they don't have value in themselves. And so why would I entertain that? I will give it the silent treatment. Because let there be light. I have received the light of Christ. That means I have received the happiness of Christ. And I will not allow a problem to begin to shadow my light. And so... Now the enemy begins to feel like he's not even recognized. When a person gets the silent treatment, psychologically, they become confused, very frustrated, angry, and start feeling like they're unimportant. And that is some of the most vicious personalities, is a person that feels unimportant, they began to get vindictive. They began to lash out. They'll say, Thank, you may be saying, and I know I've had things said about me that's just simply not true. I'll just remain silent. God is my defender. I will, I will not. Oh, my Lord, had Eve kept her mouth shut, the fall would have never occurred. And if you'll keep your mouth shut, your fall will never occur. So, how influential 
is a person in your life? Here's the answer. How easily can they interrupt your silence? Now think about that. How influential is a person in your life? How easily can they interrupt your silence? My my dad, who I love very much, a man of God, a man of prayer, <laughs> and I joke with him about it. We're very close. And he'll always say, well, son, you don't tell me very much. Dad, you can't fix it. I'm a silent guy. I just, I don't share my business with that. I'm hiding from nobody, but I just don't share my business. And so... If I have a problem come my way, I may share with a few people that I know will not interrupt my silence. And David aggravated Goliath with his silence. And for some of you, that may be tough to do, is remain silent. But I can tell you this from proof of the Scripture. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. And when you close your mouth, you are deemed intelligent. That's scripture. So it's time to give your problem the silent treatment. Do you realize from the book of Malachi to the book of Matthew, even God gave man the silent treatment? Whew. Yeah, it's okay. If God can give the silent treatment, I think we can. Even in the life of Jesus, the scriptures record his life up to the age of 12, but does not come back in and tell about his life until the age of 30. Jesus had 18 years of silence. Okay? Silence not only drives the problem crazy, it calms you and it allows you to become strengthened. People may have an issue with you being silent because then they find out their influence in your life is not a possibility. Can I encourage you? Stop letting people influence your happiness. And I say that straight up. Stop. Well, Mark, I love them. Well, if they loved you, they would allow you to be silent. Because it's the thoughts that the Word of God was not given to me just to quote. It was given to me to think about. Man messed up when they started trying to quote the Scripture to the enemy. I'm not opposed to quoting the scripture. Don't take that away from here. I am opposed to fighting an enemy that you can defeat by giving it the silent treatment. So, begin to give your problems the silent treatment. Refuse to give your time to their thoughts. Refuse, I'll be in a conversation with somebody and they'll ask me a personal question, one I don't want to answer, I'll just divert to something else because I'm not going to allow that to interrupt my silence. Because one answer, learn from man and woman, learn from Adam and Eve, one answer to the enemy creates 6,000 years of questions. Just saying. So refuse to respond. Well, Mark, how do I give the silent treatment to the enemy? You refuse to respond to its demand for your attention. Refuse to be distracted by your emotions. Meditation is simply refusing emotions and tapping into the realm beyond emotions that is called the spirit realm of life, where God said, let there be happiness. 
Happiness left the earth when man broke his silence. Jesus brought back the happiness. And he said, I am the light of the world. Now you are the light. You are the illumination of happiness in the world. Don't let the light, the happiness, leave your life by entertaining a control freak called a problem. So I encourage you, as of this moment, I speak power and authority over you to remain silent. Jesus stood in the court of Pilate, and he said, why don't you even answer the accusations they're making against you? Jesus remained silent. And the word says, he said not a word. Was he going through a battle? He was going through hell on earth. But how did it end up? He lives forevermore. Get back to living happy. Stop sharing all your issues and all your problems. You don't need to fill the silence with many voices. Jesus said, there are many voices, but my sheep know my voice. Get into the Bible. Get you some stones. That's what a scripture is. It's a stone. Get you some stones to think on while all these accusations, all these questions, all these diagnoses, all these prognoses are coming your way. You can ignore the enemy when you've got a stone to pick up. So I hope you got something out of that today. It was very short, sweet, simple. Well, actually, it wasn't that short, but it was sweet and simple. And thank you again for everything. And uh, hopefully, let's see, not hopefully, uh, here in the next couple of weeks, I'll have the brand new six CD series out or MP3 out on Faith and Love, the dynamic duo, I'll let you know when those are out. And if you've never partnered with the ministry, consider that. Just go online to markshellministries.com, check it out. Uh, that is how we do what we do. I don't sell the gospel. He facilitates me carrying the gospel to people. I hope you guys are getting something out of this. Next weekend, for my friends there in Texas, the Abilene, Fort Worth, Eastland, uh, uh, Breckenridge area, Albany, I will be at the popular event center there on West Walker next Saturday evening at 6 o'clock and Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. And I'll be with my friends Danny and Neva Brown at their church, Kingdom Builders, in Eastland, Texas, that Sunday morning. And so if you can make it to those meetings, that would be awesome. And uh, there is a uh, notification flyer about that event on the Facebook page post. And if you can take that and spread it around, let's, let's just get the word out. We're going to have a blast. And I may even go deeper into what I've been teaching you the last couple of weeks. So God bless you guys. I call you healed, whole, and a special ability to just pick up stones and give your enemy the silent treatment. It'll drive them nuts. And it'll make your life a whole lot easier. Have a blessed day.